We're now going to link the concept of areas under curves or between curves with the definite integral. So if we've got a continuous function that's positive or zero, so above the x-axis, and here we see the x-axis equation is just y equal to zero. I'll show you later while, why we're considering that. If I'm looking at the area between interval a and b, and my function is positive, then the area bounded between that graph and y equal to zero, or we could say the x-axis, between x equal to a and b is given by the definite integral from a to b of that function. So let's take a look. If I want the area of the region bounded by the function y equal to minus x squared plus 9 and the x-axis. Now with these kind of questions, you've got to sketch them. Because if you cannot sketch them, you don't know what you're working with. So I want the area bounded by this curve in the x-axis. So this is the area I'm looking for. So that area is the definite integral from minus 3 to 3 of my function. Minus x squared plus 9 dx. So that's what we're looking at. So we now know how to calculate definite integrals, and that is minus x cubed over 3 plus 9x between 3 and minus 3. And that you can use your calculator for, do a substitution, and you should get 36. All right. Now we can look at that also as the area between this curve and the curve y equal to zero. And we'll take a look, I'll show you later why that is significant. All right, let's look at the next one. There's a lot of information here. The area bounded by y equal to x squared plus x minus 6, x equal to 2, x equal to 4, and the x-axis. Now if you do not have a sketch, you do not quite know what's going on. So let's take a look at what we're talk, talking about here. If I had to sketch x squared plus x minus 6, if I factorize that, that x minus 3, x plus 2. So it cuts at minus 3 and at 2. The turning point isn't really important. That's what it looks like. I want the area region bounded by that function x equal to 2, so that's over there, and x equal to 4, so that's over there. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for this area between x equal to 2 and x equal to 4, under the curve, between the curve and the x-axis. So that's the area I'm looking for. So that's going to be the integral, that area is going to be the integral from 2 to 4 of x squared plus x minus 6 dx. So that is a third x cubed plus a half x squared minus 6x between 4 and 2. And that gives you, with a bit of calculator work and substitution, that should give you 38 over 3. You can check that. Now take note, we're talking about areas, so we should technically say it's whatever the unit is, it's the unit square. You'll notice I'm not going to do that, but if you use this in subjects like physics or anywhere else where you're going to use the value, just be aware it is an area, so it does have a unit. Now, the sketch is important because if for this question I asked for the area bounded between 0 and 2, the graph and the x-axis, then it would be this area down here, which is something totally different. The integral from 0 to 2 of this function, if I look at the integral from 0 to 2 of this function, you can calculate that and you will get a negative number. So basically, that won't work. So I need the sketch to see that it's above the line. So what we do in this case is we're actually looking at the area of this curve between y equal to 0 and the graph. So we're going to subtract the areas. So, and the next example will be even more clear. But if I'm looking for that area, it'll be the integral from 0 to 2, but of this function, which is 0, minus that function, which is x squared plus x minus 6 dx. And you can calculate that, and you should get a positive number. But let's look at this concept again with a nicer example. 
find the area of the region bounded by y equal to x squared and y equal to x. So we can sketch those nicely. y equal to x squared and y equal to x. That's 0. They intersect at 1. Hopefully you know that because where x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. That's where they intersect. All right. A different way, if you wanted to calculate it, you want to see where x squared is equal to x. So that's where x squared minus x is equal to naught. Take x out as a common factor and we've got x minus 1. So that's where x is equal to naught and x is equal to 1. All right. So I want the area between those two curves. So I want this area. Now, if I had to find the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx, that would give me, and let's use the highlighter, so then I'm talking about this area under x squared. If I'm looking for the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx, then I'm looking we get another color. Then I'm looking at this area. So how do I get that area in between the two? Well, if I just subtract the one from the other, I'm going to get it. Which one am I going to subtract? I'm going to subtract the yellow highlighted one. I'm going to subtract x squared. The area under x squared, I'm going to subtract from the area under x, and I'm going to be left with the area between the two, that area that I'm looking for. So that area I'm looking for, is the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x squared dx. Now, if you look at the sketch, x is above x squared. So that's why I'm doing the subtraction that way. And we can see with the explanation why we're doing that. So that is then a half x squared minus a third x cubed between 1 and 0. So that's a half minus a third minus naught minus naught. So it's three six minus two six gives you one over six units squared. Whatever my unit is I'm working with. So that's why we take the top function minus the bottom function. If, I've, if I'm looking for the area between the two curves. I'm going to go back to our previous example. So if you look at here, I want I'm looking at the line y equal to naught and the parabola. So I'm taking the top function minus the bottom function. And that gives me the area. Now, these areas, you should get positive numbers, else you did something wrong. So let's look at the last example in this video. This one looks a bit different. e to the power x, sine x, and a lot more information. So let's see what, looks, what that is. e to the power x cuts here at 1. That's what e to the power x looks like. Sine x, I know it maxes at 1, but it starts at 0, so it looks like this. So what is this value where sine x is at its positive? That's pi over 2. I'm wanting the region bounded by those two curves. So where those two curves are, x equal to naught and the y-axis. I mean, x equal to pi over 2. So that means the area that I'm looking for is between the y-axis x equal to pi over 2 and those two functions. So this y equal the y-axis where x is equal to naught and x equal to pi over 2, they bound the functions. These functions do not intersect, but we can still calculate that area. So the area is going to be the integral from naught to pi over 2 of the top function, which is e to the power x, minus the bottom function, which is sine x dx. That antiderivative is e to the power x plus cos x, because the derivative of cos x is minus sine x between pi over 2 and naught. So that gives me e to the power pi over 2 plus cos of pi over 2 minus e to the power naught plus cos of naught. Now if we look at the cos function, cos of pi over 2 is 0. So that's e to the power pi over 2 plus naught minus e to the power naught is 1, cos of 0 is 1, so it's e to the power pi over 2 minus 2. And that's calculating the area between curves. And we'll look at some more complex examples 
in the next video.